Hello, this is Frank Owen, PolyX Engineering, San Luis Obispo, California. Welcome to another video in my series on Control Systems Engineering. In this video, we're going to discuss in a little bit of detail, and I hope with some clarity, the difference between the open loop and the closed loop transfer functions that one finds in studying uh, classical control theory. This is a concept that is very confusing to students. Uh, and it uh, needs to be mastered, uh, well, just to avoid the confusion. <clears throat> we saw in the uh, uh, first video in this series on control loop anatomy that uh, a standard uh, single input, single output control system has the, uh, this configuration as far as the four elements uh, that are components of the system, five if you count the summing junction, the comparator. And I uh, also worked out in a previous video what the closed loop transfer function is. Uh, from the closed loop transfer function, we can get the denominator of that function and set it equal to zero. <clears throat> and that's called the characteristic equation of the system. So the characteristic equation of the system is the denominator of the closed loop transfer function set equal to zero. Uh, notice that uh, in this uh, equation in the characteristic equation there's a, uh, a term g times h and this is called the open loop transfer function so we uh, actually have the open loop transfer function as a component of the characteristic equation which belongs to the closed loop system and the reason we call this the open loop transfer function is that if we cut the loop here <clears throat> uh, then what happens is that the open loop transfer function is the product. This is no longer active. It's as if this link is not here at all or this path is not here at all. And the open loop transfer function is simply the product of all of the transfer functions of these components. Uh, so this is confusing. I admit that, but it's just that way. I didn't invent it. Uh, it's just the way that it is. <clears throat> uh, the denominator, so I'm going to go over this again. The denominator of the closed loop transfer function uh, set equal to zero is called the characteristic equation. And it's called this because it characterizes how the closed loop system will behave. But the characteristic equation, which is the key to understanding closed loop behavior, actually contains the open loop transfer function as a component in that equation. Uh, again, I, can't, I'm, I can only apologize for this. This is just the way that it is. And it's an in, a source of endless confusion for control, control, beginning control students. A question always arises when you're involved in designing a controller or analyzing a loop. Do I use the open loop system or the closed loop transfer function? Uh, here, the open loop transfer function or the closed loop transfer function in a particular situation. So uh, here's a list that should help in when you use what. Uh, you use the closed loop transfer function to analyze stability. Uh, there are some criteria called Ruth Hurwitz criteria for stability, which will be covered in another video. Um, and you use the closed loop transfer function, you use the characteristic, a characteristic equation to uh, analyze stability in that framework. But you use the open loop transfer function to analyze steady state error. My apologies, you may not know what these various things are now, what a stability analysis is or what a steady state error analysis is, but uh, they are covered in other videos or will be covered in other videos. And uh, I'm just making a list here so you can come back and refer to it as you need to. Use the open loop transfer function to start the root locus. You get the poles and zeros, the open loop poles and the open loop zeros, and those are the beginning of the diagram that we draw called the root locus. And then we use the open loop transfer function to draw the Bode plot for a system, and we manipulate that Bode plot with uh, controller additions to shape it uh, to get the dynamics that we want. This is all covered uh, in other videos, but I wanted to put together a list here 
uh, to show when you use the closed loop transfer function and when you do use the open loop transfer function. And then we use the open loop transfer function also when we draw the Nyquist diagram for a system. The Nyquist diagram is also used for stability analysis sometime. Uh, so, uh, but when we draw the Nyquist diagram for a system, we, st we draw it for the open loop system. So in short, if you look at this list, what you'll see is that we use the open loop transfer function to analyze do most of the analyses that we do for a control loop, uh, except for the case of using the Ruth Hurwitz criteria to analyze stability. And then there are a few other tips that can be given too. Uh, we've already gone through some of this, but I'm just stating it in a more concise fashion here. Remember that we use the open loop transfer function to analyze and design controllers for the closed loop system. And that's why this uh, concept is so confusing, but that's just the way that it is. The characteristic equation is the denominator of the closed loop transfer function. It does not make any sense at all to make an equation out of the denominator of the open loop transfer function. That, that has, just has no meaning. So if someone refers to the characteristic equation of a system, he or she is simply referring to the denominator of the closed loop transfer function, not of the open loop transfer function. And then remember the reason why the open loop transfer function tells us how the closed loop system is going to behave is because the open loop transfer function is a part of the denominator of the closed loop transfer function. And actually, it's the most important part of the uh, closed loop transfer function because uh, it tells how the system is going to respond. We take that denominator, set it equal to zero, and that is the characteristic equation. It characterizes how the system is going to respond to an input. Again, this and more can be found in my uh, book, Control Systems Engineering, A Practical Approach, which is available for order from me by sending an email to me, uh, and uh, it has a cost of $25 plus shipping and handling. I hope that you have enjoyed this video, and I hope to have you as a guest uh, viewer in uh, other videos in this series. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching.